play uh, one more, and then we'll get started. Um, this is a waltz that I wrote about a um, <coughs> beautiful place up in the Adirondacks, uh, Great Camp Sagamore, so it's called the Sagamore Waltz. Good morning. I'm sorry. I um I feel like the weather bouncing up and down. I woke up yesterday and uh, almost lost my voice, and this morning I had to hunt for it. But thank goodness I won't be singing today. So um, it's been a real treat to uh, work here with um, with Luann, and to it's kind of a dream of mine to put the hammer dulcimer in a. Um, in a college setting so we can kind of pass on this great tradition. Um, we're going to start off and play a couple tunes for you, and then I'll be talking a little bit about the history of the dulcimer, and I've got some um, an, an antique instrument from New York State about the 1840s I'll tell you about. And um, But I'm really pleased to be joined today with my good friend Tom Hodgson. Tom and I have been playing about 20 years together. <coughs> Originally from Boston, Tom's just a great great guitar player so let me get my uh, damper set up and we'll be all set to go okay we're going to start with two of uh, my tunes the first one is one I wrote on a day like this, beginning of April, snowing. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's called April's Flurry, and I'm going to follow it with a tune um, that I wrote for a good friend of mine whose favorite saying was slicker than a pair of moose lips. So this is a, it's a jig that, that will, will follow that. You're right, Tom?
it's not the best music for digestion, but we hope it will <laughs> get you in the spirit of spring. <clears throat> the, um, the hammer dulcimer is an instrument that actually has been with us for centuries. It, it started out about 2000 BC, and for all you parents, that does not mean before children. It means before the birth of Christ, and it started out in the area that we know of as the Persian Gulf and um, Iran and Iraq. And the instrument was really kind of a chameleon. It moved all over the world. And actually, during the Crusades, they started to bring the dulcimer. It started going up to these very interesting parts of the world, to, um, to parts of Asia, to, um, to parts of Europe, uh, Hungary, to Greece, to Turkey, uh, China, the Soviet Union. And all these countries, the dulcimer adapted itself to play the music where it ended up in, which was really quite a fascinating thing. So we find these incredibly diverse versions of almost the same instrument. So the American instrument is, is different. It's all diatonically tuned um, and came over to this country very early on. And one of the reasons it did was because, once again, trying to come across the ocean with large instruments is very, very difficult. Um, this instrument was actually the instrument that settled the West, and you would never know that. Um, in fact, very close to here in Chautauqua County, there were three factories, Sherman and Stedman, and both in Chautauqua County, were making hammered dulcimers primarily for people to travel out West with. I have a really nice example. This I instrument over here, Thank you, Tommy. Um, over here behind door number one. Um, this is an instrument that came from the factory in Sherman. It, we believe it was made somewhere 1842, 43, somewhere around there. And um, they were all built with the trapezoid inside of a uh, rectangular box. This was more of a parlor instrument. And a lot of these instruments had beautifully ornate legs and covers, so you could actually use it as a um, parlor instrument. And a lot of these instruments were, were built, then shipped across the Great Lakes, where they ended up in Chicago and in St. Louis, where people started off their trek out west. And instead of carrying pianos in horse and wagon, which, of course, if you've ever watched any of those old black and white John Wayne movies, you know, a town's all dusty, it's just been settled, and they break open the barroom door, and there's... Somebody's sitting there slapping along on the honking tonk piano, and Mae West is sitting right on top of there belting out all those body songs. Well, how did the piano get there? In reality, the piano did not get there. And Mae West was sitting on top of one of these, which might not have been too, <laughs> too pretty. But this was um, the instrument that, that did settle the West. And it's kind of a fascinating thing. A lot of these instruments, you now find them in, we in old western towns. And you can also find them in Chautauqua County. One of, the, one of the factories went under after they made several thousand instruments. The other one burnt down. Um, but this wasn't before they, they made a lot of instruments that moved their way out west. And I also have this great picture here. Tommy, you know this guy? <laughs> This fella is Jesse Martin. Jesse Martin, um, his family came from northeastern Pennsylvania, and he, actually northwestern Pennsylvania, I'm sorry, he taught his grandsons, Paul and Sturl and Phil Van Arsdale, to play the dulcimer by sitting down and teaching them just playing one phrase at a time. And they wouldn't learn the next phrase until they got the first phrase right. And none of them can read any music, they're, but they're real treasures. I actually, uh, Sterl Van Arsdale has been an enormous influence on me when I was uh, going to school at the College of Fredonia years ago. I met Sterl, and that's how I got involved <coughs> with playing the hammer dulcimer. And their family was kind of a missing link um, for the dulcimer that we, we kind of lost track of during the 1940s and 1950s. And um, he was in the vaudeville circuit. Another thing that we probably don't know a lot about was that in between the sets in vaudeville, the dulcimer bands would come out, and they'd, they'd move, move the sets, they'd close the curtains, and here they'd come out, and they would play 
popular tunes of the time, uh, tunes, um, Stephen Foster songs, um, uh, dance tunes that were being played in the square dance um, halls. And we'll actually play a couple of, uh, of those for you right now. Um, the Van Arsdales have a very unique style of playing. They use uh, flat metal hammers with blocks of wood on the end. And um, in fact, they use hacksaw blades. They, they file down the edge, and they get this really wonderful, bouncy triplet sound. So we're going to play two of those tunes. Um, one of them is a tune called uh, Melly Bly. Oh. And the second is a tune called The Fireman's Breakdown that came from their family.
too loud. How's that level? Good, thank you. Well, I will tell you the logical progression from the hammered dulcimer was the piano. So if the hammered dulcimer had never been invented, think about that. Yes, there you go. So from the hammer dulcimer came the piano and its complex series of hammer weighted action and um, damper uh, series, which is very interesting. And all these different versions of the dulcimer around the world, it's, 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 really, it's really great. In Germany, there's what's called the hawk, the hawk bread. In um, China, we have the Yang Ching. I had the great pleasure of working with a Yang Ching player <coughs> by the name of Xiantian Zhang, and uh, we, we built a hammer and dulcimer for him, and he got me a Yang Ching from China, which was a, a great, great experience, except for the fact that I live in Red Creek, New York, and he thought New York was all in New York City. And when he found out he was driving to where he lived, where we lived, he got terribly lost, and everything was lost in translation. But we did do some music together, which was really great. And one of my um, goals as a, a composer and a um, musician is to try to get the dulcimer into more of a um, more of the public eye, which has been uh, a great thing over the last 25 years or so. Um, and we're going to play for you a, a tune you'll recognize. How do you like that? <laughs> we play all these traditional things and original things. And, uh, um, so this is a tune from a, a movie. And it uh, started out in black and white and ended in color. So you know what, you know what movie that was, right? Would you say Pee Wee Herman's Great Adventure? No, no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. That's right, the, the movie The Wizard of Oz. And um, this is one of uh, my favorite pieces to do um, with the dulcimer because you can get lots and lots of really interesting moves with it. So we're going to play this nice and slow and pretty, and then we're just going to booger it all up. No, we'll, 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 put some, we'll, we'll, we'll put some syncopations in and swing it up a little bit like it was a Gershwin piece. And uh, let's give Tom Hudson a big hand for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Tom is one of the most um, well thought of uh, traditional guitar players in, in the country. He's just he is just a real treat to play with. He he can find rhythms that people don't even know exist, which is really great. So here we go with somewhere over the rainbow.
Well, I can't tell you what a great treat it has been to be working with uh, the students here, working with Luann. It's just great. It's kind of been, a, 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 as I mentioned, kind of a dream to put the hammered dulcimer into a classroom setting. The hardest part is tuning. When you have five or six hammered dulcimers and they sit for a little while, it's like your neck, you know. <laughs> it kind of all go, they go out of whack. But as you can hear, the kids did a great job. Let's give them a really big hand. The students did wonderful. And it's, 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 it's my hope that we can continue to do programs like this uh, at, at places like, like the university here because it helps to keep this tradition alive. When this music, when traditional music was going on in the time of Jesse Martin, in the time these factories were putting out the hammer dulcimer, there really there weren't ways for people to hear this music. Most of the time, it was passed on either through somebody playing it or through sheet music. Um, up until around the turn of the century, everybody, and that not last century, the century before, we started saying, here's a song from last century that I wrote, <laughs> realizing that, you know, we're talking about the eighth from, from the beginning of the, um, from 1900. Um, up until then, sheet music was the only way people got their music out. And m a lot of this music really was not written down for quite a while. And there are lots and lots of wonderful traditional variants of lots of, uh, lots of this music. This is a lot of the music that, we, that, that we're playing. It's music you'd hear in the dance hall, um, music that you might hear um, when people were... were uh, Stephen Foster songs, and then it started to branch off and do, do more things. I'm going to play you um, a tune of mine that's, that's pretty special to me. Um, pretty soon, well, usually the wildflowers start coming out in our woods about the beginning of May. This year, I think, they'll probably be out by the second week of April. <laughs> it's been kind of crazy. But um, Trillium um, on our property, we have about a 50-acre old fruit farm <coughs> up near Lake Ontario, and down in our woods, the trillium is, it's just thick. It looks like, it looks like a frost down there in the morning. Um, not just one or two, there's, there's, there's hundreds of them. So this is a tune I wrote in honor of that, and it's called Trillium Lane. Are you ready, Tom? This will be easier on your digestive system.
Um, we're going to do one or two more uh, things for you, but since this is a forum, um, if any of you have any questions about anything, all over the country, um, we make this instrument I'm playing here, which is about a five octave instrument, we make in central New York. Um, this one I have designed, so it, it's, it's made in the older style. I have these smaller instruments made for me. Um, by a fellow who lives in Missouri. And this instrument, what we've done is we've taken a smaller size and, and put a few more strings on it so it has a lower harmonic frequency. So this, these smaller ones actually play in D too. Um, most of them just play in G, uh, G and C. So, um, but there are places all over the country that make these. And one of the um, things that really changed the dulcimer was um, the invention of the electronic tuner. Because before that, everybody played out of tune. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't know it, but um, it, it, that really helped a lot because now people could tune them. Before, th the original electronic tuners were about this big. Uh, first, there were strobe tuners, uh, which they still have, um, but that has changed dramatically. It's changed people's uh, perceptions. Most people that build hammer dulcimers are dulcimer players, and we design the instruments to to best suit their particular style. So some instruments have a lot of sustain, uh, sometimes an inordinate amount of sustain. This one I've designed to not have a lot of sustain um, all the way through it. So, And there's lots of different styles. Um, and I think the Dulcimer is probably more popular now than it was, I think it's ever been in our country. You have a question here? Um, it has, these are felt bars, and this is spring steel. So. There's a line that goes through on each end of the bars, and when I press down on the um, on the pedal, it it puts the spring steel down, so it puts the felt against the string. So it's like um, a damper pedal on the piano, except pianos have a much more complex series of uh, dampers. So there's always dampers that are set on the piano, and then when we press the loud pedal, it actually releases some. This is just um, a little bit cruder version of that. And it works very well. It gives you a totally different... Sure. I think it was, I think it was actually right in there before the piano. I do, and the harpsichord was right in that same period of time, except harpsichords are not hit. Harpsichords are plucked. So, so it's like... It's like a little delay, kind of like this. Barb on one side, a barb on the other. So when the the actual uh, piece goes up to hit the string, when it comes back down, it catches the other string. So you get this delayed. Very. That's what makes the harpsichord have that have that very big delayed. Yeah. Um, the other interesting thing is that this instrument, the range of the dulcimer is very similar to that of the harpsichord. So. Some people play the hammer and elsewhere and the harpsichord together, and it's, it gets a little muddy because it's in the same it's in the same range. So that's, that's a good question. And yes. Pianos really great. Um, sometimes we just have percussion for accompaniment. Sometimes we don't use any accompaniment. Um, uh, my wife plays concertina, so we often play together, just the two of us, which is kind of a, an interesting sound. Um, back in the 1800s, you would have probably heard this with, uh, depending on which ethnic um, variant you would hear, lots of times you'd hear it with an accordion, accordion and the hammered dulcimer, or um, hammered dulcimer and piano. They were really, that, that's a really, in New England, the traditional New England sound is hammered dulcimer, piano, and fiddle. Those three give you that really nice sound. Now in Appalachia, you hear a lot of the dulcimer just playing with the fiddle by itself. And that is a, and I like to do that too, because then I can kind of play, the, vary the rhythms. Um, now when I vary the rhythms, Tom just picks up on it in a second, and the next thing, next time around, he's doing that same rhythm that I just did, which is really, really great. So yeah, lots of, lots of other instruments can work there. Yeah. Talk to Luann Crosby after the class. Um, we are actually having, we have a, an adult class here that I've been doing um, as part of the, of the um, class. And if we do it again, then, then, then we'll certainly, if we can get your address and information and let you know about that. Do you live around here? Good. Good. <laughs> there, there, 
We have a joke in the business. We, we like to say we spend half our time tuning and the, and the other half playing out of tune. Yes. Now they're about this big. So, Any other questions? Yes. She was plucking. She was being incredibly creative. And that's one of the things that I was hoping was, would happen with this class. You have to understand, this class, I don't think this has been done at the college level. We kind of designed this to put lap dulcimers and hammer dulcimers together. For those of you who don't know what the lap dulcimer is, There it is right there. It's, um, these are cardboard, but the lap dulcimer is, is more of an Appalachian um, invention. It, they, came, they came from the old German um, table harps, um, Scandinavian table harps. And these instruments are strung. They share the name, but this is where the name came from. So they're very different. I mean, they're not even kissing cousins. But putting them together is a real challenge. Um, and it was really great. But back to your question. What she was doing is she was playing the chords to the song and plucking them out, just discovering that she could. And that was a great thing. That's great. So give yourself, give her a hand. Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? And she's sinking down into her seat. <laughs> um, so yes, using the dulcimer to pluck was really kind of a neat thing. Anybody else have a question? Yeah. Um, yeah, you can play some of it. Um, some of it you can't play on it because it's not fully, uh, we don't, the dulcimer is not chromatic. Um, but yes, we do, we do some rag times and things and some swing things too. But because of the makeup of the instrument, it's tuned in, in, in scales. It's, it's hard to do a lot of accidentals. You have a couple, but it's not fully chromatic like a piano is. Um, but yes, Any, anybody else? All right, we'll play one more frenetic thing. Um, and once again, I'm really pleased. Let's give, the, let's give the students a great big hand for the great job they did coming in. And Tom, uh, Tom Hodson, a big hand for joining us. So we're going to close with a couple of American fiddle tunes. First one is called Leather Britches. And the second one is um, called Texas Gals. These are both uh, tunes. Uh, the Leather Britches is a Midwestern tune. Texas Gals is a, obviously a tune from Texas. And then we're going to uh, finish with a French Canadian tune. And I would teach you all how to laugh, but I can't even do it today, so I apologize. <laughs> um, and, and so this is a tune called The Hangman's Reel. We'll and with, and that, um, there was a fella who was sentenced to die, and he, uh, his, his crimes were so grievous, they had the whole village together, and they had the gallows and else had to hang him. And he said, you know, I'm a fiddler. I'd like to play my fiddle one time before you hang me. And, of course, the folk tradition gets real gray and you know, not black or white. And so we don't know what actually happened, but we know one version of the story was he picked up his fiddle and he played so beautifully. Everybody started to, to weep. And they said, you can't hang him. He's a national treasure. And they let him go. And another version says he picked up his fiddle and he played two notes and they hung him anyways. But my favorite version is playing the hammer at He picked up and he started to tune. He said, hold on. It usually takes me three or four days, but I can get this thing in tune. So. So here we go. Are you ready, Tommy?
Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And if, if you want to come up and take a look at my bell some more, or if you'd like to come up and take a look at this wonderful antique instrument, feel free. Or the pi great picture of Jesse Martin. It's a great picture because he's so serious. And lots of times when I've asked kids, young kids in elementary school, why do people look so serious in those old pictures from the turn of the century? And they all say, because they had wooden teeth. <laughs> but that's not the case. You know, was, you had your picture taken once in your life if you're lucky. So thanks so much again, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.